Astronomers have found an extra low hum rumbling through the universe. The discovery, announced today, shows that extra large ripples in space-time are constantly squashing and changing the shape of space. These gravitational waves are cousins to the echoes from black hole collisions first picked up by the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory experiment in 2015. But whereas LIGO's waves might vibrate a few hundred times a second, it might take years or decades for a single one of these gravitational waves to pass by at the speed of light. The finding has opened a wholly new window on the universe, one that promises to reveal previously hidden phenomena, such as the cosmic whirling of black holes that have the mass of billions of suns, or possibly even more exotic, and still hypothetical, celestial specters. It's beautiful, said Chiara Caprini, a theoretical physicist at the University of Geneva and CERN in Switzerland who was not directly involved in the work. A new era in the observation of the universe has opened up. The results come from studies that stretch back more than a decade by four teams based in the US, Europe, Australia, and China. Today, in a coordinated data release, the teams present evidence for a background hum of gravitational waves that were detected by tracking changes in the impossibly regular beats of objects called pulsars. As long wavelength gravitational waves pass through our cosmic neighborhood, they distort the space-time around us, which changes the arrival time of a pulsar's pulses. Researchers had to map the correlations of these arrival times across dozens of different pulsars for decades in order to pick up the signal. I had butterflies when I first saw this, said Stephen Taylor, an astrophysicist at Vanderbilt University and chair of the team known as the North American Nanohertz Observatory for Gravitational Waves, or NANOGRAV. I'm so excited we can finally talk about it. Most likely, the gravitational waves come from pairs of supermassive black holes that are spiraling around each other inside merging galaxies. But we might be seeing something else entirely, perhaps something exotic such as ruptures in space-time itself, resulting from loops of energy called cosmic strings. Finding for the first time the suggestion of background gravitational waves is fascinating, said Juan Garcia Bellido, a theoretical cosmologist from the Autonomous University of Madrid, who was not involved in the work. It's really Nobel Prize winning research. There's two ways to start the story of this discovery. The first, as usual, is with Albert Einstein. His general theory of relativity in 1915 suggested that the universe is an ocean of space-time on which objects like black holes and stars sit. Movements of these objects would send ripples across this space-time ocean, gravitational waves. The other place to start the story is in 1967 with a graduate student from Lurgan, Northern Ireland, named Jocelyn Bell. Using a radio telescope that she helped build near Cambridge, UK, she spotted an unusual signal in space that repeated every second. She and other astronomers later classified these signals as a new class of celestial object known as pulsars, the rapidly spinning cores of dead stars. Today, some are known to spin exceedingly fast, emitting regular pulses of radio waves hundreds or even thousands of times per second. The stopwatch-like regularity of pulsars makes them valuable cosmic timekeepers. In 1983, the U.S. astronomers Ron Hellings and George Downs suggested a novel way to put them to use. If gravitational waves were squeezing and stretching space-time, that motion would change the arrival time of the pulsar's radio flashes. The key is to look at many pairs of pulsars and compare their time delays. If they're close together on the sky, they're both going to be early or late, said Sarah Weichland, an astrophysicist at the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee and chair of NANOGRAV's Gravitational Wave Detection Working Group. As you pull them apart, they become out of sync, but in a way you can predict. To catch these fluctuations, pulsar timing arrays such as NANOGRAV use multiple radio telescopes to observe many pulsars over many years. These projects are cosmic cousins of LIGO and other earthbound observatories that detect gravitational waves by looking for tiny changes in the relative lengths of its two arms. While LIGO's arms are each four kilometers long, 
Pulsar timing arrays effectively use the distance from Earth to each pulsar as a much larger arm, one hundreds or thousands of light years in length. What we've essentially done is hack the entire galaxy to make a giant gravitational wave antenna, Taylor said. This longer distance makes pulsar timing arrays sensitive to a different variety of gravitational wave. Whereas LIGEO can detect high frequency gravitational waves, which might occur when star sized black holes orbit each other tens or hundreds of times a second before merging, pulsar timing arrays are sensitive to processes occurring across years or even decades. That's one reason why pulsar timing arrays need many years of data. If it takes a decade for a single wave to pass by, you can't detect it in just a few months. Of the four groups releasing data today, NANOGRAV is the most confident in its result. The project was founded in 2007 and has largely used the Green Bank Telescope in West Virginia and the Arecibo Radio Telescope in Puerto Rico, which collapsed in late 2020, near the end of NANOGRAV's 15 years of data collection. We're still mourning the loss of Arecibo, Taylor said. Separate pulsar timing array projects were also established in different parts of the globe. The four teams, which together form the International Pulsar Timing Array, coordinated today's announcements, but they have not yet performed a combined data analysis. It's complex, said Andrew Zick, an astronomer at the Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization in Australia and part of that country's Parks Pulsar Timing Array team. We're ready to move towards being a more unified thing. In 2020, NANO Grav released preliminary data from 12.5 years of observations. Those showed a tentative hint of gravitational waves affecting the pulses of some 45 pulsars. Now they've added a few more years of data, along with data from nearly two dozen more sources, and a more consistent pattern has emerged. It really jumps out to us, Vigilant said. We're looking at deviations in time that are a couple of hundred nanoseconds, said Scott Ransom, an astronomer at the National Radio Astronomy Observatory and a founding member of NANOGRAV. They've detected a particular pattern in the data, called the Hellings Downs Curve, that makes them confident that what they're seeing is the gravitational wave background. That's the smoking gun of gravitational waves. The European team, which observed 25 pulsars over 25 years with six telescopes, sees similar hints of timing delays, but is less certain of their results. The Americans are very confident, said Michael Keith, an astrophysicist at the Jodrell Bank Centre for Astrophysics and part of the European team. The Australian team is reporting observations from 32 pulsars over 18 years, while the Chinese team has observed 57 pulsars for a little more than three years. Supermassive dances. So what's causing these waves? The most likely sources are supermassive black holes, behemoths millions to billions of times the mass of our sun. These are found at the center of massive galaxies such as our own Milky Way. When two galaxies collide, as sometimes happens, the supermassive black holes at their centers may also begin to orbit each other, twirling around at a cosmically ponderous rate and perturbing spacetime as they do. If you have a rotating distribution of mass that's not symmetric, even something small, like a spinning pen, gravitational waves are coming out, Keith said. On big enough scales, with supermassive black holes, the low and steady rumble of these waves becomes detectable as they permeate space.